Hello, everyone. This is Gil. Uh, today's webinar is ANSYS Ice Pack and ANSYS Sherlock for Temperature Cycling. Um, this entire presentation was created by our very own Tyler Ferris, who is one of our expert FEA users. Um, and I'm presenting it. My name is Gil. I'm the Senior Application Engineer for um, ANSYS Sherlock. So the impetus for all of this is that uh, many times the simulations that we run are kind of simulations that sit on their own. Um, what we tried to do here is to use ANSYS uh, Ice Pack, ANSYS Sherlock, ANSYS Mechanical, and ANSYS Workbench. Well, everything sits inside of ANSYS Workbench to create a total picture of what the uh, circuit card goes through when it uh, goes through temperature cycling for fatigue and for um, thermomechanical bending. And then all of this um, sits together inside of Workbench um, with each piece being done by a different uh, piece of software. So the reliability calculations are done inside of ANSYS Sherlock. The thermal calculations are done inside of ANSYS Ice Pack, which is the, the CFD engine. And then the thermal mechanical uh, calculations are done inside of um, ANSYS Mechanical. The ANSYS Workbench platform just connects everything together, and that's where we manage the project. So we start by setting up a board in Sherlock, which you will see in the live demo how easy that is to do. And we export the um, FEA model directly into um, the Sherlock created model directly into uh, ANSYS uh, Workbench and directly into um, uh, ANSYS Ice Pack inside of Workbench. Um, inside of Workbench, what ANSYS Sherlock does is it creates the ma materials through the engineering data um, uh, module. It brings in the geometry and then attaches everything together inside of the mechanical model in a single click, pretty much. Um, we take the ANSYS Sherlock created model and move it into uh, ANSYS uh, Space Claim. Uh, inside of space claim, we can um, answer space claim. We can um, identify objects or uh, use the ice pack simplify button to identify um, uh, ice pack geometries and to make simplifications for um, uh, ANSYS ice pack. The mechanical models and the uh, ANSYS ice pack models should be um, should be similar, and they do map to one another automatically, pretty much. Um, the analysis was actually done inside of ANSYS Ice Pack. Um, we did two of them. We wanted to see, this is a very sim simple uh, and easy thing to understand. Uh, we took the exact same model and then we ran it once with no airflow and once with airflow, and then we plotted the temperature. Obviously the one without the airflow um, is, uh, is gonna be really high temperatures. The ones with the airflow uh, because of the cooling, the active cooling. Um, has a much um, much lower temperatures. Um, Tyler set this up and ran this in uh, in uh, ANSYS Ice Pack, and then um, brought all of it back into um, Sherlock in order to get the reliability results. And you can see that when we take the thermal map that was created inside of ANSYS Ice Pack and we bring it into ANSYS Sherlock, we get the low temperature and the high temperature for the uh, operation. And then um, we have dwells, ramps uh, at different temperatures. Uh, and that would, is what determines the, uh, the damage in the time to failure for each one of the components. So you can see that there's a lot more, uh, there's a lot of components that are at risk, identified as at risk. So the reliability portion was done inside of Sherlock. ANSYS Sherlock, and then the uh, thermal portion was done, the inputs for the thermal portion were done inside of ANSYS Ice Pack. The ANSYS Ice Pack model was pre-processed as in it was created originally inside of uh, ANSYS Sherlock. Then we said, okay, well, Tyler said, okay, let's see what happens when we take the ANSYS Ice Pack thermal results the thermal map result, and we run a thermal structural analysis as well to, say, to see what happens to the board bending. So not only do we have the mechanical 
the thermal um, uh, loads. We also have the mechanical loads, and all of this is done inside of ANSYS Mechanical. And you can see that ANSYS Workbench down here is basically how we manage the entire project. This picture is from inside of ANSYS Mechanical, and then this is the result that happens for it. So we did this for um, a temp temperature map with the airflow um, uh, imported into it. And you can see that there's a strain on the board when you have the temperature expansion effects um, that does not exist when you don't have the temperature expansion effects. So the loading, the loading for uh, the thermal uh, analysis uh, was done for a um, mechanical shock. And the mechanical shock result is different when you have a thermal load versus when you do not have the thermal load on it. So this is a combination of a 25 G, 10 millisecond half sine pulse applied in the negative out of plane direction. And then we also add on top of it on the right side, you see what happens with the temperature expansion effects plus the mechanical shock load. So all of this is run inside of ANSYS Mechanical. Then we can take the entire we can take the entire um, uh, analysis, bring it back into Sherlock for reliability purposes. And what we see is that without the temperature expansion effects, um, and, and Tyler here looked at two specific components, um, U9 and U10, as you can see from the two red arrows right here on the, on the top, two red arrows, you can see that when you add the temperature expansion effects, they become critical components, whereas before they were not critical components. So the, the mechanical shock reliability analysis inside of Sherlock was performed twice, once with the temperature expansion effects and once without. And you can see that with the temperature expansion effects, it has a higher probability of failure. So I asked Tyler for some of his top tips. Well, actually, I didn't have to ask it because he, he just told me. Some of the top tips for um, uh, how to run an analysis uh, nicely, because this is kind of complex. We're using four different tools in the ANSYS arsenal. Um, and he said, one of the things is to make a copy of the geometry after the Sherlock import. Um, there are two geometries in here. In reality, there's a more complex um, geometry that you can run mechanical shock on. It can include leads and heat sinks and all kinds of other small features, where usually we simplify those for uh, ANSYS ice pack. Um, the simplification you should do in ANSYS space claim. Um, so before you go into ANSYS ice pack and simplification, should be as much as possible before you go into ANSYS ice pack um, so that the meshing, it's already pretty complicated as it is. So it, it, to make the meshing as easy as possible, of course, you can run something on, um, you can run an analysis in ANSYS ice pack on every single geometry. It just takes longer and, and it's a little bit more difficult. Um, in ANSYS mechanical, um, when you bring in the the geometry for or the mechanical model from uh, from the ANSYS Sherlock export. Um, you need to change it to full integration. Um, so it's sometimes when the leads are modeled, um, you might only have the mesher might only put one element inside of the lead uh, geometry, which can lead to some weird issues um, when you're doing the solve. In general, if you are doing leads, you might have to do a stronger mesh, um, a better mesh uh, density, um, which means longer solve times usually, even for transient structural analysis, which is supposed to run relatively fast. It makes things just um, increases the complexity. Um, never move the PCB. So Sherlock does not know where the PCB went. It expects to see it exactly in the same location that it left it. So if you have a housing or if you have some kind of external geometry, when the PCB comes in from Sherlock, leave it where it is. You can move components a little bit. You can move leads around a little bit. You can delete certain geometries or add certain geometries. But the PCB itself, the way it came in from Sherlock, you need to leave it. 
and you need to move the housing around the PCB. And if you need a, a user guide on this, just let us know. Um, we actually have written a lot of how to do that. There's like nine different ways to do it. All of them are are equivalently um, the same. It just depends on uh, how good you are at um, uh, running uh, mecha uh, ANSYS Mechanical. Um, it's it's better to incorporate the uh, ANSYS Sherlock prediction um, every time you, um, you you do things. This is like the, his general conclusion is that basically if you are running an ANSYS Sherlock analysis and you have the ability to perform these additional you know ice pack and transient structural mechanical shock analyses within Workbench, it is better to put them in um, because first of all now it's not that complicated. It's relatively easy, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to incorporate things. And then the the design changes um, uh, can easily be captured when you use these uh, these three uh, analyses together. Um, I, I am going to tell you that I, I have seen uh, in the reveal we've had a demo reveal from the 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 product team. Um, Ancestor Sherlock is going to be integrated into the ANSYS Workbench environment, um, maybe in 2020 R2, but probably in 2021 R1. Um, I, I don't know if it'll make it into the next one, but it, it'll, it's definitely what we're going to do. We would like to be able to drag and drop a Sherlock analysis um, module inside of uh, ANSYS Workbench uh, project. Uh, and the interface for for uh, ANSYS Sherlock will be very similar to how the rest of the um, uh, ANSYS Mechanical, ANSYS Ice Pack, ANSYS um, products uh, exists anyway. So you will open up an um, ANSYS Workbench uh, project, uh, and the project will interact with the uh, Sherlock um, through some kind of APIs, I'm guessing. But I, I've seen I've seen demos of it, but I, I haven't gotten to play with it, but it is coming. So just know that our integration is constantly getting better. Um, before, before I go into a live demo, um, let me do a summary of what we showed to, uh, right now. Um, we had an analysis that had a, an actual, this is an actual multi-physics analysis. It actually showcases how strong the ANSYS Workbench environment is for comprehending the full cycle of reliability thermal structural analysis. So in this case, the structural analysis was the, um, the, the drop testing, the, the mechanical shock test. So we had a full and complete circle where we started from the ECAD to MCAD translator inside of ANSYS Sherlock. We exported it into the general ANSYS Workbench environment. And then in the ANSYS Workbench environment, we did things to it. The one thing we did to it was um, we used it inside of ANSYS Ice Pack. And then we went and used it inside of ANSYS Mechanical for the mechanical shock simulation independently. Then we combined the two analyses where we had a hot and a cold drop. So with the, with the um, temperature effect and without the temperature effect as a pre-stress condition. And then we saw the difference between them. Both of those analyses got fed back in to Sherlock, got fed back into Sherlock, and then ANSYS Sherlock gives you the reliability results at the end. So you start from design files and you end with a full cycle um, thermal mechanical analysis for, um, for shock and for temperature cycling, which is really uh, a substantial increase in capabilities um, since, we, since we've had um, in the last you know, couple of years. So let me show you um, a live demonstration of what um, Sherlock looks like. So this is Sherlock environment. And in order for me to create this, this board that we talked about, I go to, I grab the exact same files that I would have had I been um, sending it to the board shop. And I'm going to call this uh, webinar two, because it's the second time that I'm doing this webinar. I'm going to call this PCB PCB. And then all I am doing right now is I'm letting Sherlock automatically process the board for me. And what Sherlock is doing is it's taking the entire ECAD and just like the picture that you saw, this is my board with the copper layers, with the, um, uh, the board geometry, the indi indi individual components uh, on the top, um, components on the bottom, 
with all of the copper layers. Sherlock also creates for me automatically every single uh, copper layer, not just as a pretty picture, which is you know very nice to see pretty pictures, but it also creates, as you can see, this green stuff here, that's the copper, and the not green stuff is not copper. So Sherlock automatically creates for me a calculation of the board material properties based on the copper percentage in each layer. And this is the copper percentage in the first layer and the second layer. And you can see it, you can see it right here. When you go to the layers, you can see this green is right here. And then this is the next layer down, which is the gray layer. And you can see that's 94.8% copper. So this material property right here, modulus CTE, 26664 megapascals will be transferred to the ANSYS workbench environment. Sherlock does this for all of the layers and it does this again for all of the parts. The individual parts, we track a lot of properties for it, material properties, sizes, package, locations, all of these things. And we have a library that allows us to um, update the parts properties directly from the Sherlock library. So, and again, this is, all happens automatically. The Sherlock created board, the Sherlock created PCB, is then can then be exported directly into um, into the the mechanical um, the ANSYS mechanical through the ANSYS workbench. Um, you can even create um, individual uh, boundary conditions inside of Sherlock. Go into edit, edit mount points. You can actually see these as mount points that were created automatically by Sherlock. And then you can see that you can change the type of uh, boundary conditions. So let's do these guys as, as aluminum uh, standoffs. And then you'll see them uh, on the bottom of the board when I export it. In order to export, right click, export FEA model. Just go directly, we'll put this directly on my desktop and we'll call this a workbench journal. You see ANSYS workbench right here, that's the export. And we'll call this one webinar two. And then all I have to do is fill out a form. This is all of the modeling that I have to do inside of, of, of uh, ANSYS Sherlock. I just fill out a form and then I say export file. And then all I have to do is sit back and relax. You'll see that my mouse is going to stay right down here. I have to just sit back and relax and let Sherlock do all the heavy lifting for me inside of ANSYS. So all of the material properties, all of the all of the geometry, and all of the um, all of the properties that I had inside of Sherlock get transferred automatically into into um, uh, ANSYS uh, mechanical. And you can see the workbench environment right now in ANSYS. What's happening now is that the um, engineering data, that's the material properties are coming in from, uh, from Sherlock. You can see the geometry is coming in from Sherlock. And now you can see the mechanical model is being created by Sherlock. And I haven't moved my mouse from down here this whole time. So I didn't have to do any of this. So this is not engineer time, this is all computer time. Sherlock creates those clicks automatically for me. And now um, Workbench, ANSYS Workbench is about to open ANSYS Mechanical and it processes through all the information. And at the end of it, what you get is you get a geometry and here it is. And you can see the little nubs at the bottom, all of the materials, here they are. Here's that 26664 for the for the the PCB, the Young's modulus, and the CTE. And all of the materials for all of the um, individual bodies have already been um, attached to the to the bodies. So it's very easy, uh, very easy to use. I can do a click here on the analysis and automatically go to that transient structural analysis from right in here. And now I can start setting up the actual you know, time steps and, um, and and the mechanical shock that I want to. I'm going to show you what that looks like on the on the um, uh, ANSYS Workbench uh, platform. This is the Workbench platform right here, and you can see that it goes directly into the transient structure. If you would like to get an ice pack, um, ANSYS ice pack analysis done, 
you just have to drag the ice pack in. You can actually just grab the geometry and bring it into the setup. Right click, update upstream components. And then I think if you just do a double click, ah, I forgot the space claim thing. You see, that's why I need Tyler in my life. Open this up in space claim. We're going to wait for space claim to do what it does. And then um, we'll identify the objects based on their uh, ice pack um, uh, for, uh, for ice pack. Just going to wait for space claim to open up. On the workbench tab at the top, ice pack objects identify, click OK, and then you can close and then double click. Once you get this green check mark from Space Claim or Design Modeler, I think, I think, then um, ice pack will open up, it'll input the geometry, and then you can pretty much go from there. All the materials um, get created automatically um, with the uh, ANSYS Sherlock to ANSYS ice pack interface um, that that if, if anyone would like to see how that works, we will we will make sure to demonstrate. So here's my, I, learned, I don't know much about ice pack, um, but here is, I understand that I need to do this. And here is my here's my board coming into iStack, and you see that it's simplified. The um, ANSYS uh, mechanical objects here will all be um, round. Here they are simplified to um, to squares automatically by uh, ANSYS space claim, and you can see all of the um, all of the mount points on the bottom. These guys, they are instead of round, they are also they also become uh, squares which makes everything easier for uh, ANSYS ice pack. And then you would run the analysis here and then bring the, the, the temperature maps back into Sherlock, um, to, uh, to ANSYS Sherlock. And this is the entire workflow that you need to do. So literally, once you have the board set up inside of um, uh, ANSYS Sherlock, it's literally a couple of clicks to bring it into a transient structural analysis or actually any of the ANSYS mechanical analyses. And then, um, uh, and again, a couple of clicks to bring it into the uh, ANSYS ice pack. Um, you literally just have to open space claim like you normally would, clean up the geometry, and then it comes right into uh, ice pack uh, automatically. I'm going to take this guy right here. There we go. And this is the, the live demonstration. Um, and again, I'd like to thank Tyler Ferris very, very much. And uh, to the entire development team, which are Dr. Um, Hillman Hernandez and uh, Blateau for uh, putting all of this uh, workflow together for us. And um, without them, obviously, I couldn't show you anything. If you have any questions, issues, comments, um, please uh, feel free to email me directly or email any one of our uh, sales team. All you have to ask is, I would like to see the ANSYS Sherlock to ANSYS ice pack or ANSYS Sherlock to ANSYS uh, mechanical uh, integration. And uh, any one of us would be happy to, um, to, to help.